Okay, YouTube, Stimulator757, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a Altoids 10 USB charger. First thing you're going to need is an Altoids 10. Alright, now I've already cut a hole in here for where the USB will be. Save time on video. Secondly, you're going to need a USB extension cord and that, I mean, you can pick this up by the dollar store. And um, you're just going to chop this off about an inch worth, inch, inch and a half of wire. And then you're going to take all the sheathing off, the insulation, to get to your four basic wires. You're going to have a black, a white, a red, and a green. Um, and you want this to be on the female end. So, that's one of your first things. Secondly, you're going to need a pack of 9 volt battery uh, snap connectors. This I picked up at Radio Shack for $2.99, pack of 5. Because um, you're going to be using two 9 volt batteries, which I had forgotten. Um, you're also going to need a just a simple little switch. Um, cutting pliers small ones you can use. Um, some sort of a razor blade to cut the insulation off and such to get to uh, these four wires. Um, and you're also going to need a hot glue gun. It's really a matter of time. You can also use super glue um, or both. You're going to need electrical tape. Also some sort of a soldering iron. This one's just more of an industrial one. Do some soldering. So if you don't know how to solder, you might want to find somebody who does, or you know, you can't really do this. Um, you're also going to need some solder, and one of the main components is going to be 7005 uh, voltage regulator. This will can take up to 35 volts DC at one amp and bring that down to steady five volts um, and anywhere in between so as long as it's between five volts and 35 it'll keep it at five volts um, this was a dollar to like 50 at radio shack um, also be good to have a multimeter so you know if your connection is alright um, and two 9 volt batteries which I left in the other room so, let's begin. First thing you're going to want to do is take your tin and cut a hole in it. By doing that, you're just going to want to take this and basically line it up here like that with the lid closed. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. And uh, pencil mark that out and then cut it out. I used a Dremel. Um, I mean, you could do it with... You could, like 10 steps would be good. Some people, if you really don't have any resources, use a pair of scissors if you can. Um, so, what you want to do is actually uh, open up your packages, get out your voltage regulator, and your snaps. It's already done. I only needed one, but I had to get a five pack. I had another one. Um, if you look up on YouTube, there'll be other videos where a lot of, pretty much everybody only uses one battery. I'm using two because they'll just last longer. And they should fit in this tin. I've never done this before, so I'm going to figure this out. Um, you can also use double A's and such, triple A's. There's other ways of doing it with uh, diodes and uh, resistors, but this way seems simpler to me. Also, there is somebody on YouTube who had recently posted a video and he had put a diagram up. Um, I This is the diagram. Um, let's see if you can see this. Um, uh, something like that's kind of hard to see. Um, I'll post a, a right at the end of this video uh, there's a uh, name so you can figure out the video 
uh, this diagram helps you a lot. And he also proves that this works, which was the main proving ground for me. So, where you're going to want to start out doing is stripping all your wires. These are simplest ones to use. Now you should end up with something like this. Now what you're going to want to do is I can tell you these hands are really helpful. They live up to their name, I gotta tell you. Okay, now you're gonna take these two and put them together. This is gonna be the black wire from your USB to the other end of the switch. And both of these are going to go to the middle pole of the voltage regulator. Hopefully this will actually stick. And I think we got that one to work. Now your circuits are hooked up. Okay. Two 9 volts. Now what you're going to want to do is... You're going to want to take the rest of your uh, extension cord, hopefully you didn't throw it out, and you should have a male end. Now this one I, I just cut, but this one which was from something else. I already have the four wires exposed. So I'm going to plug this into the female USB. I'm going to hook up my batteries. Hopefully when I hook up this one, it's going to be off. Okay. Now you're going to take your multimeter set it to the lowest volt DC and see if you have any current 4.98 okay so you know that part works well, I know that part works. Get rid of that. Do this. I want to take everything. And test with it. So everything's going to go. Everything's going to fit. Now, if you're using the regular output to 10, you should have no problem with fitting because that's what I'm using. Now the switch I'm not going to mount to the outside because I don't want it to turn on in my backpack. So I'm going to plug in my hot glue gun. Get that heating up. Now that I know it works. And I didn't blow this little uh, voltage regulator. And while it's heating up, we're going to put some electrical tape on this stuff. So that way nothing short circuits and breaks your iPod or your phone or nuts. Okay, now I have this pretty much all finished. As you can see, I got my batteries in there, the switch, the female USB port, and down in there I have the voltage regulator riveted to the tin. You want to rivet it or bolt it, not glue it because, 
or just leave it hang there because it needs to be attached firmly metal to metal to the tin um, because that gets very hot and the tin helps displace the heat so it won't overheat. I don't know if it will overheat just by leaving it out but I don't want to take a chance. So, got my phone. You can see it's all one piece. I'll turn it on. Phone lights up. And if you know about newer phones, you'll know that you get this if you don't use the right charger. This is not the correct cable, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see the little charging bar there blinking, sort of. And I turn the switch off. It turns everything off and it's running on its own power. Turn it back on. Now, the one that's picky for everybody, the iPod, or in some cases, the iPod video. Now, the way I had rigged it up in this one, it works. As you can see, my iPod, just on, right? I turn the switch on. Show you it's all there. And if I can turn, do this switch on, and it's charging. Try it again. Switch off. Not charging. Switch on. Charging. Okay. So that's how this works pretty much. Um, what I'm going to end up doing is take, I'm going to get a solar panel from a company called Harbor Freight. Uh, they distribute tools and such. Um, they have stores and you can go online. If you go to Harbor Freight, Harbor as in uh, Ship Harbor, Freight as in Shipping, uh, dot com, and you'll see stuff. There's a solar panel for 10 bucks. Um, then I'm going to hook up with another better clip with by taking these two out and then the whole thing will run on solar power. Um, when I do get it, I will make a video of it. Um, up until then, it'll just be running off the two 9 volts. The two 9 volts are there because it'll just last longer than just having one. It's still only 9 volts going into the power uh, and the voltage regulator and 4.98 volts coming out. So, it's all finished up nicely. This will be my backpack. I want to put an LED on with a 5 volt. I'm going to look for one because when I went to Radio Shack, they didn't have it. So we'll go to another one, see if they have one. And um, yeah, so this is Steam 757. And this is the way I figured out how to make the USB uh, charger, I guess you could call it. So anything that runs off USB, you can use with this. Hopefully, you'll figure out through this crude video how to make it and I'll send you a link and I'll put a link up at the end of the video of the other guy who I gotten the idea from real well and um, hopefully you'll have luck. Stimulator 757 